Right. Here we go. That was great. Thank you, Richard. Now we've got uh, Susan Gerbeck. We, uh, we're going to have a few sessions with, uh, well, at least two sessions with Susan. So this is the first one. Um, <clears throat> so I encountered Susan uh, on the Skepticality podcast, which happens to be the oldest skeptical podcast in the known universe. Um, it's older than the SGU by about a week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and I heard her talking about the GSOW project and um, uh, I was uh, convinced at the time that this is a very, very important thing that uh, Susan's doing. Are you going to be talking about that right now? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's good. Um, so the questions I asked Susan, what, what, uh, what would be your superpower and what your superhero name is, and she said, I guess it would be to be able to inspire the best in people. Gee, that sounds pretty hokey. <laughs> um, and I have to disagree, I don't think it sounds hokey at all. It's very, it's a good thing, that's a good thing, but good on, she's a hokey. Um, the counsellor, <laughs> one of them. GSOW girl. Um, uh, so the second one, you're not adventurous with food. Um, you really try anything new. You're picky and it drives everyone wrong. Well, mm, not too embarrassing. <laughs> and number three, Bigfoot, as it is the most most plausible of pseudo science and the least disruptive of the laws of science. Okay. Well, give us a moment. Oh, well. Hey, so here comes the American. I hope you have no trouble understanding me. So I wanted to mention a few things really quickly on our back table in here where Richard has a few really awesome uh, necklaces and um, so on that you can get. I have some free items. I have um, some mirrors with the little stickers on the back, please take them, my business cards, and I also have some large stickers that you can use to put on your laptops or whatever you want to do, but please take them with you because I do not want to take them home with me back to California. A couple other things I want to do really mention is that I am uploading photos all through the whole presentation, I mean the whole weekend I'm here, and I've included many of you, I'm taking lots of photos, so please tag yourself, or if you know somebody on there, please tag them. Um, on my business card, you'll see SusanGerbic.com. On there is where you're going to find the high resolution photos eventually, as I have by, by the uploads. So if you want to download photos, please do so. But on Facebook, please tag yourself so we can all know who you are and I can remember your names. And um, I have in the back, I have a bag, one of the Kiwi bags, and I'd like to have everybody sign it. And I put a pen beside it so I can remember my, my time here. And I want to also mention that I have a workshop at 16.45, whatever that is, and sorry, um, right before we go on the bus. And that workshop I'm going to be talking about, GSOW, we're going to be doing actual editing. I'm going to pull up on the screen, I only have maybe 20, 30 minutes to do that, but I'll pull up on the screen with my computer and we're going to show you some live editing. While um, Mark uh, Bryant was talking, we. We wrote his, my editors here wrote uh, his page a few days ago. It's been up maybe two days. But during the Q&A today, his picture got, a, I mean his web, Wikipedia page got a photo that I took like moments before he got up on stage. So you might want to check that out. And that's live editing and how we do things here in GSOW very fast. And I also do want to mention that Julie and Harold here, raise your hands or stand up or something. These are two of my really awesome editors from GSOW. They're fully trained. They'll be able to handle the hands or any questions that I can't get to. But I am yours the whole weekend, so please meet with me. I will be happy to sit down with you at any time and pull up Wikipedia pages and go over them in, in detail or whatever you want. Gosh, what a beautiful view. I can't believe this. I'm just going to stand here and just look at this. Okay. So, skeptical activism. I am a skeptical activist. You can look at the Wikipedia page for Susan Gerbeck if you want to know more about me. I'm not going to go into super depth. But, um, I run a project. Uh, there it is. Isn't this an awesome logo? Um, this is our newest logo called Gorilla Skeptics. So we uh, play off the word, a lot of humor. Um, we have a very bad reputation in the paranormal world, which is fine with us. And, um, 
every edit on Wikipedia that is a non, uh, that the paranormal doesn't like, we get blamed for it, whether we've touched it or not. And we're, we're fine with that. So we are one of the most hated groups and uh, people in uh, the world of uh, paranormal. So what I'm going to be talking about today is a project called the We Got Your Wiki Back, right? So the We Got Your Wiki Back project is a, well, the GSOW, I should probably back up and say, the GSOW is, we're trying to rewrite Wikipedia concerning scientific skepticism. We're asking for citations. Uh, we are trying to improve the pages by adding photographs, audio, content, and making sure they're really in great shape, okay? We are doing this in all languages. I have editors all over the world. We are in a, all our editors are in a secret cabal on Facebook. It's hidden. You cannot find it unless you're a member, one of our, one of our members. I have about 70 people right now, and they are all over the world. And we are there. We're a lot of fun. And I am here, obviously, to recruit you. <laughs> Sorry, that's what I'm here to do. OK, so the We Got Your Wiki Back project. What we're trying to do, we've discovered, is that in order for people to be able to do the things that they do, the Richard Saunders, Mark Bryan, and all the other uh, speakers here today, and the organizers of the, of the group, and more and more and more, is for them to be able to do the best work possible, we need to make sure that they have a really great Wikipedia page, and it, it gives them I don't know how to say this nicely, except it gives them more respectability um, in the eyes of the world. The media is able to find their, their information. They're able to access it. They're able to say, hey, this person's sane. Let's, let's talk to them about um, whatever, the, whatever it is that they have information they need to know about. And we, when I say we, I mean you all and myself, we have the responsibility of having the backs of these people. because. They can't edit their own Wikipedia page. It isn't necessarily something easy to do anyway. We have to do this because they are our spokespeople. If we don't have their backs, who's going to? If we don't do this, there's nobody who's going to do it. And we can't ask the world to respect our people, the spokespeople that are representing us, if we can't respect them. So if they have crap, on their Wikipedia pages or no Wikipedia pages when they deserve to have one, and not everybody does. There's a very high bar you have to meet for notability. Somebody's got to do this, and that's what GSOW does. That's what GSOW has been doing for about four or five years now. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you one quick, um, um, oh, I'm really having fun with this little thing. Okay. So this is Robert Todd Carroll. Hands up, anybody knows who he is? Besides Richard Saunders? Oh, I'm so shocked. Okay, so I want you all to be taking notes eventually. You've got to look up these people. Robert Todd Carroll is, or was, uh, the man who invented the Skeptics Dictionary. He is all over um, the internet. He was Wikipedia before Wikipedia became a thing. Wikipedia is only, I think, 13 years old. Robert Todd Carroll just recently died, and he's one of my, he would be a peer of mine. And uh, this was his Wikipedia page. And I took that photo at a conference that I attended in California. And um, this is his Wikipedia page with 10 references. By all standards, this is a very good Wikipedia page, all right? This is what existed for most of the world. Well, one of my editors got involved during his training, and he rewrote the page. And this is kind of what it looks like now. That doesn't look too much different there. Oops, am I playing with these two buttons? OK. OK, this is what it looks like now. But if you were to scroll, and I don't have all the scrolling in here, you can see now there's 53 citations, a quite a big difference. And if you look at Robert Todd Carroll's Wikipedia page, you will see what an amazing person this is, and you will be totally shocked that you don't know who he is, and you didn't know who he is, and you're going to be like, oh, gee, I guess I should have known who this man was. Um, he recently died of cancer. Boy, we've been doing a lot of cancer talk this weekend. So. Um, Anyway, so that's an example of a before and after. That's what GSOW does is we get involved, we say they need a Wikipedia page or they need it rewritten or they need it, you know, cleaned up or something and we get involved in it. And that was just a before and after I want to show you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell you a story. And we talked about cupping last night and, and, and uh, Loretta mentioned it again as well. It's not important if you really, really understand all the 
ins and outs of cupping therapy to the story I'm about to tell you. And I have a lot of stories I can tell you. I can tell you lots of things, but I picked cupping therapy for a very special reason because you are in New Zealand and I will explain that in a minute. Uh, we're not having it done at lunchtime or anything like that, don't worry. Okay, so you might have noticed that the Olympics happened, right? Okay, so the, the media kind of said, what the heck is that stuff on, those hickey-like things on uh, Michael Phelps? Is that his name? Uh, what are those things? And what happens when anything hits the media is people start to Google, right? And one of the first hits you get is to Wikipedia, right? So um, it's, I think, the 10th largest uh, website, by the way, the most viewed website, Wikipedia. So the New York Times picked this story up and said, gee, what's this, what's this cutting thing? Wow, that's pretty cool. And then here comes, like, CNN. Look at these hickeys all over this guy. That's a really great story. The media is going, what the heck? The media, not only the media, but the public is going, what is that? What? What? And so they, here's CBS News. And again, now what was going on is that uh, the media didn't have anybody to contact necessarily. So who are they contacting to find out about this? Cupping pr practitioners, right? Because they don't know who we are as a community, the skeptics, they don't know all this kind of stuff. So what the media finds out and what the world finds out is pretty much what's on Wikipedia. So I'm getting ready to go for work. Uh, I'm retired now, but at the time I only had about 30 minutes before I had to get to work, and I said, oh, gee, what the heck, I'm seeing this up on Facebook, all these people were putting this stuff up. And we're preaching to the choir, right? We're sharing stuff on Facebook and Twitter, and we're saying, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous, but we already know that. We might hit, you know, our neighbor or somebody else who's kind of like, you know, a school friend who doesn't really know this, but we're not hitting enough people, and the best place to hit it is to educate, to really, really educate people is Wikipedia. So if I hit the right button. So people are going to Wikipedia. What are they going to do? You know how the first couple sentences, the, the first paragraph is called a lead. The majority of human beings that read Wikipedia read the lead and that is it. And they're going to go and they're going to sum it up in their mind because it's not really all that important to them. They just kind of want to know what it is. They're going to look it up and they're going to say, wow, what is this thing? They saw this photo and then they're going to see this, this, this thing, and all they're really going to get out of it is cupping therapy is an ancient form of therapy and it promotes healing. I'm out of here, I've got other things to do. That's what they're going to see. But if we, sum, if we make it even bigger, all they're going to see is cupping is old and it works. That's all, that's all they got out of it. Close the screen, move on to cat videos or whatever they've done. So here comes GSOW. Susan is um, at home. Like I said, I have about a half an hour. Um, it's August 7th. And enter the We Got Your Wiki Back project. Okay? I already know the names of some really awesome people who probably have written about cupping therapy. I know that they have awesome Wikipedia pages because we wrote them and we maintain them. So I already know that. So what I do is I'm like, okay, what is Harriet Hall, who's, who's a very good friend of mine, what has she written about cupping therapy? So people aren't necessarily going to read the Harriet Hall, Wikipedia, uh, the uh, articles she has written. Unless you're already kind of in the community, that kind of thing. But what is Harriet Hall written? Cupping therapy. I search for it really quickly. I come up with an article. And then I see David Gorski, another person we've written his Wikipedia page, and another amazing person, Stephen Novella, who's spoken to you from the SGU. Uh, another awesome. And I keep going, and I said, well, what about Simon Singh and David um, Calhoun, <coughs> Edward Ernst, and Mark Crispin? And they've all written about cupping therapy. Let's get their opinions, because I can't necessarily put my opinion. Let's get him onto the 10th most amazing page in the world. Let's get him on Wikipedia and let's see what it says. Remember, I don't have a lot of time. I've got to get this done. So I rewrote the lead. Okay? And here's what I wrote. Um, all the blue links that you see right there are the uh, hyperlinks that are going right directly to those people's pages. So critics of alternative medicine such as Harriet Hall, Mark Crispin, Simon Singh, and Edward Ernst call coming pseudoscience nonsense a celebrity fad. That. Gibberish and state there's no evidence that cupping works any better than a placebo. And then I added a uh, pharmacologist, David Calhoun, writes that cupping is laughable and utterly implausible. Cite, cite, cite. Right there. Okay? Then 
Um, a little bit later, David Gorski gets up and he gets he gets an article out really quickly, and I uh, add it to the page as well. A practice surgeon, David Gorski, claims it's all risk for no benefit and it has no place in modern medicine. Another site, and then I have to work. So I'm thinking, okay, this is August seventh. The media has just come out with this. This is when it's going to get hit. People are going to go to it. So I left work a little early. I can because I was retiring. Here's my slide on homeopathy. Um, oh. and, uh, no, I'm sorry. We've shown some pretty disgusting pictures this week, it's the, the, only in the last few uh, um, presentations. So I'm, this is my warning to warn you that the photo I'm going to show you next is pretty disgusting. So by profession, I am a photographer, professional photographer, specialize in babies. But um, I know how important having a photo is on a Wikipedia page. It is extremely important. And I can't just take a photo and upload it to Wikipedia. You have to have licensing. You have to own it. And I couldn't, there was a picture floating around out there and I knew this was really graphic and I knew it was probably the wrong thing to put up because it doesn't really reflect cupping. It's the extreme of what can happen to you. Some of you people probably already know. When I mentioned this to Loretta, she goes, oh no, not that picture. <laughs> uh, I was telling her about it. And so, um, I'll tell you before I, I go to the slide, okay? So, I said, let's get this photo. I took it off a Chinese video. I tried to do the licensing as best I could. It's a screenshot from a video, and I just popped it up on the Wikipedia page for um, uh, cupping therapy so that the media and the world would be able to see this extreme case of cupping. And, um, okay, so I'm going to show it to you. So if you're kind of squeamish about this stuff, don't look. I know you're all going to look. <laughs> I'm just, I'm warning you right before lunch. So this man had, uh, he's in China, he had the cupping done on each, every time he had it in the same place, it raised big blisters and they popped. And... Anyway, so this is the extreme. Okay, it's off. All right, gone. So that is an extreme photo, but I wanted to do it. I wanted to get it out there to send a message. If you're not reading the lead that this is harmful, at least look at this picture. You're going to go, oh, wait a minute. No, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, okay, I'm out of here. So because I am the type that just does this kind of crazy thing. These are all the Wikipedia pages in other languages for cupping therapy. I don't even know what a lot of these languages are. I just opened them up and put that same photo on every one of these pages, okay? Now it only lasted, the photo only lasted maybe 20 hours because I didn't have a quite correct licensing. But that's okay, I'm fine with that because 20 hours is all I really pretty much needed before it got taken off. Um, also, I asked my editors who do speak other languages, I said, please go, I know you don't have a lot of time, but please just go in and check all the pages of the languages you know. This is, these are written in the language of the language. So um, this word right here is the word Russian in Russian. So you, as you look, you know, there's, it's not Spanish, it's Espanol, because this is how it's done in, in, um, in uh, Wikipedia. You'll see these links all along the side of a Wikipedia page, and it'll show you all the languages that something's written in. And these are really great, because you're writing left to right. <laughs> you can't imagine, you know, it's opposite, so you're trying to write in it and edit, and it's hilarious when you can't read what it says. So, the uh, last thing I did is, when I was putting up that picture, uh, Brad Mackay, who's uh, one of your all's uh, persons here, uh, I think he's now in Australia, but he's from New Zealand, I believe. We've been kind of working on his Wikipedia page, we haven't sat down and worked on it a lot. But people were putting up on the Wikipedia page something about the Olympics, so I followed it up with this, that uh, the Olympians are doing a great disservice to their fans and they follow their lead by calling cupping an ancient but useless traditional therapy. So, you know, that's what I had done. So here's what happens. It's <laughs> Feeding Frenzy, it's the best picture I could find that actually looks like people. This is Wikipedia. So the media is finally caught up, and the Wikipedia editors have finally caught up and said, what the heck's going on on this cupping therapy page? What's going on? What's going on? So we backed off. All of my GSOW editors backed off, because that's what you got to do. Because edits are coming in fast and furious, and people are reverting each other, and people's timbers are going up, and they're just you know, editing it. And um, they're trying to change the page. Now, Wikipedia is, um, all the rules of Wikipedia our skeptic rules. This is our thing. This is like having, you know, control of, of, of the full government with, you know, everything. This is ours, you know? We need to own this because this is 
the, like I say, the rules are all skeptic rules. So I have to back up and leave it alone and just assume that everybody's going to, the best things are going to happen. And here's what happens. So here's, I haven't checked it in the last day or so since, or the last week or so since I wrote this. I don't know what the cupping therapy says for you now, but it did say for a long time, this will lead, which sums up to cupping therapy is pseudoscience, it does not work and it may be harmful. And that, that's all people get out of it when they look at the Wikipedia page. I'm happy with that. And then they put up the same photo again, and then they added another photo. And I like, I think, you know, they're not the graphic photo I had, which probably fairly is not, shouldn't have been up there anyway, because it really was the extreme and not the typical experience that we would have with cupping. But you can see, they don't look like something people would want to look at and go, look, I mean, that's a live flame right next to her hair, and that doesn't look sanitary. She's not only, just like on a street somewhere, that doesn't look very, you know, like something I really wanted to go do. So I'm happy with those photos on there. We have to kind of back off. Like I say, I don't own Wikipedia. I can't control it, everything. So I can only do what I can do and then just hope for the best. And those two photos on there is probably the best I can expect. So here's, you know, we're skeptics, right? We like numbers, right? How many people here like data? So we need to try to be able to figure out did I do anything? Did it work? Did, I mean, what did I get out of this? What was the whole point of doing this kind of thing, you know? So I need to point out that this next slide I'm going to show you are Wikipedia views. I cannot tell how long a person was on the Wikipedia page. I cannot tell if they are uh, unique viewers, you know, if they saw it more than once, if they went more than one time to the same page. I can't tell that. I can't tell if they were on for seconds. I can't um, tell any of that kind of data right now. They don't have any way of, uh, they don't have any kind of system for that. All I can tell is how many times the Wikipedia page was accessed. That's all I can tell. So in your mind, uh, I want you to kind of think about what do you think? I mean, how many people visited the Wikipedia page for cupping therapy? Who knows, you know? I don't know how many they normally get. I didn't really know. So here we are. And you can see that they normally received, and I have this written down somewhere, I can't remember, uh, it's about 1,000 views a day, 1,500 views a day is about normal. But on the days, August, okay, it says August 8th, but this is the day that I was actually on it. I was editing on the 7th, but the data shows up on the 8th. That got 106,000 views. 106,000 views on the day that I had that picture, and I had the, uh, the lead written the way I wanted it. That's pretty damn good. That's better than a blog. That's better than uh, an article put out somewhere. That's getting outside the choir because that was not accessed by skeptics necessarily. That's just somebody watching the Olympics going, "What the heck?" And you can see. Can you guys see it? I don't know. I'm glad we got this, the down. You can see that it dropped uh, to about uh, seven thousand views the next day, and it continued down. And you can still see that there. At this point, when I had printed out this slide in October. It's still higher. It's, I think it was about 1,200 views a day. Believe it or not, 1,200 people a day go and visit this Wikipedia page. And now it's about 1,600 views a day. So that's getting us somewhere. Okay, now, what happened after the feeding frenzy is the normal Wikipedia editors um, moved the lead where I had mentioned all that stuff. All those comments, all those people, they moved them into the body of the article, which is where they probably should be. Um, but, you know, I just put him up in the lead for that day, hoping that maybe it would stay, but it didn't. But that's okay. So what happened is, we got your wiki back. How much, how, how much influence did that have? Did people check out the Wikipedia pages that, out of the people that I mentioned on there? Remember I said there was live links in there. So you can, I gave you a, a little bit of a, a screens. You can see David Calhoun, uh, Brad McKay. Uh, David Gorski, Harriet Hall, they all had the exact same peak, exactly. Now, these aren't 100,000 views. This is like 200 views. So it's just the way it, um, it's all relative. So in other words, you've got the lead written there, right? It's great. It's 100,000 views, but most people don't really read it. They're, they are clicking on these pages. It is bringing in uh, views to them, but it's not bringing in 100,000 views but it's bringing a lot more than they normally have. I mean, this is probably like 15 or 20 a day. 
and then here's you know two or three hundred views in one day. What this means is if GSOW had already had the cupping therapy page written in advance and had written it in such a way that when the media came in and looked at the page, and they're looking at wow, we should be called about cupping therapy <coughs> to get some information about it. Instead of calling a, 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 somebody who practices cupping therapy and putting them on the news, they might have called one of our people. Because they would have been able to go to the Wikipedia page for uh, Brad McKay, David Calhoun, Harry Hall, Edward Ernst, depending on what country the media is looking at it in. And they would have said, Wow, Harriet Hall, she looks reasonable. David Gorski, oh wow, look at this article she wrote following the citation that we left. And then we said, oh, let's give this person a call. I can see that the media, they've already done media. They're already, they're easily approachable. I can see, you know, they can find out a lot of good things about our people. And they would call them and put them on the media. But because we didn't know, I'm not psychic. Um, I didn't know that uh, uh, Michael Phelps was going to be appearing with cupping marks on his body. Uh, but, you know, you can do only what you can do. And right now, the Wikipedia page is in damn good shape, at least when it's last time checked. And uh, now, if this happens again, there's a very good likelihood that one of these people will get a call from the media. And then we'll get more representation and we'll get ourselves out there and we'll get some good education and science out in the... Uh, in the media where it should be. We might not know it's because of Wikipedia. The media is not going to say, hey, I just you know, read your Wikipedia page and I, you look pretty like somebody I should talk to. It's just going to happen. It, what GSOW does is all behind the scenes. You won't even know that these things are happening unless you, unless you have a way of knowing about it. I wanted to mention why I really want to talk about this to the New Zealand skeptics. And I'm so happy that, that you guys brought me here. I really appreciate it. Um, because when the world, when the sun rises in the world, it's rising on New Zealand. So you are our front line. When something like this is happening in the world, as New Zealand wakes up to it and you start going, what the heck? You can react faster. So that when the rest of the world wakes up and as the sun rises all over Europe and, you know, and even Australia and Europe and, and uh, uh, the rest of the United States, the edits were already there. They're already there because you guys had it. You were on it. You're you're the front line, the first uh, the first uh, fortress or whatever you want to say, and that's why it's so important that I can get some of you guys to join my team and I can train. But I'm going to show you a couple other things really quick. This is a, a very sad case. This woman died of um, a stroke from visiting a chiropractor. She was a model, and uh, she was very famous on uh, YouTube and, I guess, Instagram. She was an Instagram, Instagram celebrity, who knew? But she died many, many months ago, and one of the people in our community, David Gorski, who is a oncologist, he writes under the name of ORAC for science-based medicine, and he wrote an article about, I think that she died from chiropractor from chiropractic uh, manipulation of the neck. And then like eight months went by and he kind of forgot about it and then the media just came out with maybe in October that the coroner's report showed that she did die of neck manipulation from chiropractic. Uh, she, she was at a photo shoot, she fell down or something. She hurt herself and then she was complaining on Twitter and Instagram that she was going to go see her chiropractor the next day and then she had a stroke and she's dead. So they, so Oren wrote this really awesome article um, showing graphs of how the neck, you know, what actually happens. He's a medical doctor, so he's a surgeon, so he's able to really explain it in really good detail about what happened and how a stroke can be caused by a manipulation by a, uh, the chi a chiropractor. And so her Wikipedia page, I, I see these things and I think that's an awesome article, but who's going to read it unless it's just in our, our, our area. And I went to Katie May's Wikipedia page and it said cause of death, stroke. Okay, what is Susan going to do? <laughs> I got a citation, I'm going to use it, you know? So I went in and I put a stroke resulting from chiropractic manipulation. And I put, this is highlighted, chiropractic manipulation, so anybody interested can click on that link and they will go to chiropractic manipulation and they can read about that, so if anybody's interested. 
So this is just kind of a little thing. And then citation nine, David Gorski, Mystery Solved, and it gives all the detail about what it is that actually, if somebody needed to know, they could look at it. And um, another thing GSOW does is we, we, hide, we have this little thing called author link, and I, I make this a live link so that if somebody's looking at the citations at the bottom, they can click on it and go right to David Gorski's page. In other words, I'm gonna mention him as many times as I possibly can on the Wikipedia page to get more views to back to David Gorski's page. I call it leading breadcrumbs mm -hmm. so that we can we can find these things. So stats one more time. <coughs> Here she is. Okay. So she had, I can see this better. Um, on the days that they came out with the coroner report, she was well before that she was receiving a little over 50 views a day. And on the days that the coroner report came out, we almost were hitting 20,000 views a day. Okay, so I'm trying to get the information in a place where people can access it and learn on their own. Because we know, just from the years that I've been doing this, you can't yell at somebody and change your mind. You cannot do that. You can, you can, they're just going to circle their cognitive dissidence wagons. And they're going to be like, oh no, you guys are full of it. But if you let them save face, and let them do the research, you're going to get more people than you would by yelling at them. If you say, you know, I've heard some pretty bad things about that. Uh, you know, the homeopathy stuff, or that cancer clinic, the Brzezinski clinic, I've heard some things that aren't so great about it. And they're like, really? Oh, well, I don't know. But you know what? They might go home and Google it. And when they Google it, they're going to get a Wikipedia page. And when they get a Wikipedia page, they're going to read it themselves, and maybe they're going to come back to you and say, you know, I've been doing some thinking and some reading, and I think that I've made up my mind that they're not going to trick me this time. I think I know better. And they say face. They can come back and say, I figured this out, and I now know that homeopathy is just water. I now know that you can get a stroke from a... a manipulation of, a, of the neck. I now know the cupping is crazy. And they're not going to say, you know, I was reading this Wikipedia article. They're not going to do that. They're just going to say, I did some research. I looked into it. I'm smart enough to figure this out myself. You don't have to tell me I'm stupid. I know that this, you know, I figured it out. And that's what it's all about. You can't, that in the hokey pokey. Um, you can't, um, <laughs> it's too close to lunchtime for you guys, I'm sorry. So um, I'm going to show you like one other thing, and we'll have actually a few minutes for, for uh, questions. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm going to show you just something really, really quick. Um, this is something I did just the other day, just for you guys. So there's this Wikipedia page called the New Zealand Skeptics. <laughs> All right, you guys. <sighs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay, so we have 13 citations. Not so bad for a Wikipedia page. But, um, and I don't have this pulled up on the screen. I'm going to make you guys actually look for it, but I want you to, during lunch, hopefully, I want you to actually look at the Wikipedia page now. It is so important that we have to get our history in a place where we can see it. That means when you do. When you when you when something, you, whenever, you film, whenever you do a lecture or whenever something happens, you've got to get it in the media, or you've got to get it written on the website. You've got to get it someplace where people who like GSOW are historians. That's what we are. We're historians and activists. We need to get in a place where we can access it. So I went back and I rewrote this page. And thank you so many of you guys to do a lot of work running around for me trying to, oh my gosh, track this stuff down. Mark Mark was. Just, oh my God, uploading stuff like, I'm like, I need this, I need this, I need this. And he kept uploading stuff for me and it was great. But now you'll look at the new page and you'll see it has like a few more citations and like it's like this long now. Um, the, can you put up the other presentation really quick? The, the other one is just very quick. And this is something I'm going to talk to you about. Um, because I know not everybody here is going to want to join GSOW, but um, if I can influence you, I don't like to have people join GSOW at the conference. I usually like you to go home and think about it for a few minutes or, uh, you know, look into it. Because when you train with me, I do your training. It takes months, weeks or months to train with me. Because when you get done, you're going to be a damn good editor. You're going to know a lot. And uh, you're going to be the most powerful project 
in skepticism today. There is nothing out there. As amazing as all the other things are that is going on, there's nothing that has the power that we have. And this is, this is why it's so important. But for those few of you who do not want to join DSW, that's fine. Just, you know, that's OK. Uh, but I want you to be able to leave the conference knowing some things that you could do right now, this day, on your lunch, on your phone, things you could do. And these are a few of the things you could do. So this is called Web of Trust. It's kind of, we're not quite sure that this is still as powerful as it used to be. It's a rating website. Um, you, uh, it's a plugin you attach to your computer. It's Chrome. I'm not even sure. I think they might even have evolved past uh, Chrome. And you rate websites. You just say, is it safe? Is it not safe? That's it. And there's millions of people who have this plugin also. So if you have the plugin on your, on, your, on your computer, and I don't think this is available on phones. This is only computers, like a PC or a laptop. If you have the plugin, when you go to a website that's dangerous or has been rated badly, you're going to get a, a warning, like this one right here. Oops, did I just turn off? There it goes. This is the Brzezinski Clinic. Rawr! <laughs> <laughs> this man does not like us at all. It's another one of these people that I've been involved in. And you see all these little green spots right here. These mean that's yellow, that's yellow, that's red at the very top. I guess you can't see the color really good here. But if you Googled Brzezinski Clinic and you had Web of Trust plugged into your computer, it's, it's a plug-in and activated, then you're going to see the red spots, which are dangerous to go to. They've been rated as not trustworthy, not safe by people in this room and people around the world. It's just like a click. It's not safe. Click. It is safe. That's all it is. Um, you're going to know. So imagine there's people in your family that you kind of don't think have really the, the skeptic skills to kind of know what's kind of bad and what's kind of good. If you could borrow their computer uh, for a few minutes and you would say, like, you know, let's say it's grandma. Okay, let's just pick on grandma. Not that I have a thing against grandmas because, you know, I'm getting there myself. You take the computer from them and you say, grandma, you know, I'm going to put this, um, this uh, program on your computer. It's it's going to keep you from um, getting malware and, and bad stuff and viruses on your computer. And I'm just going to install it really quick. And when you're on the internet, and if you see yellow, which means that it's about to be, you know, it's about to be rated red, uh, green or red, you just say, if you see red, Grandma, don't go to that page. If you see it by the link, just, just, just avoid it. That's that's bad. It's it's uh it's got like viruses or something on it, you know. <laughs> If it's green, grandma, you can go there. That's cool. Just go there. I'm just, it's a protection for you. So imagine, I know you're all thinking of somebody right now that you could do this to. Um, it's, it's a great site. Now, if grandma accidentally went to a website, or if you wanted to go to a website, it's going to look like this. So this page is all grayed out like this, and then it's got a warning. This page has been rated unsafe. It's dangerous. It's scary, especially if somebody doesn't have a lot of tech skills. They're going to go, oh, no, I'm not going there. Oh, man, I'm backing off, backing off, backing off. So you could go to the site, and you can't rate these for uh, malware. So it could have malware, but like in this case, the Brzezinski Clinic isn't malware. You could go to the site, you would be fine, but in some cases. But you don't tell her that, or him that, or whoever it is that you're, you're doing this to. You just tell them, no, don't go there. So another site that I do not have this, the site for is Rebutter. It's just come back. Um, you can look that up. It's uh, done by an Australian from uh, Sydney. And it's a rebuttal site to try to get us out of our bubbles to, to explore a page. It will come up if it's rated as, if it's been rated. Um, it'll come back like, here's the best argument against this page. So if it's a homeopathy page that's getting homeopathy, you know, is wonderful, or raw milk is amazing, or whatever, in the corner it will pop up a link to a page that counteracts it, like the opposite opinion. In other words, a skeptic site. And then the same goes for the skeptic site might have, well, I guess you could put a, a homeopathy or a link to positive or raw milk or whatever. So this is another way of helping out the community right now. This is a podcast that I am on, Skepticality. And um, Skepticality and any other site that you can think of means you need to rate these. Go on to iTunes or wherever else you can think of that you uh, review your, uh, that you get your podcast from, rate them. Write a, write a nice thing, um, um, Skeptic Zone, everybody just give them five stars, you know, those kinds of things. Yeah, five stars, he's, he's going, yeah. Because this moves them up in the rankings. 
So when anybody's looking for anything that has to do with science or whatever, uh, they found this, they got this new phone, and they're like, wow, a podcast, cool. What am I going to look at? I like science. What, oh, what's the skepticism thing? What's, what's the skepticality thing? They're going to, the, it moves them up in the rankings, it's more likely they're going to be moved into the community. Anybody here come from podcasts, the skeptic community? I mean, there's one. That, uh, to, that probably had never really heard of the skeptic community until you found podcasts, and the podcast led you to this community. It happens. Um, here's another thing you can do is you can donate money through Amazon. It costs you nothing. All you do is you buy your things on Amazon like you normally do. It's Amazon Smiles. You can find different groups that have um, signed up for this, and then they, get them a, they give them a little bit of money back to them. So you don't have to do anything. Uh, it's uh, here I've donated nine cents to the Bay Area skeptics because I almost never shop on Amazon. But you can see already 32 uh, million dollars have been donated through Amazon Smiles, and it's it costs you nothing. All you got to do is just uh, do it on your computer whenever you're shopping at Amazon. You can sign up for it, and then you don't even remember it. You forget all about it. Another thing you can do that we would really appreciate is to rate uh, books that you've read that you've enjoyed from the science and the skeptic community on. Rating sites like Amazon or wherever Barnes and Noble or wherever else you buy books from, because again, it brings the ratings back up of the book and it supports the author who's doing all the work. So we ask that that's another way you could really help out today. And um, I'm almost done. This is Patreon. Um, I support several people on Patreon or on um, just recurring payments through like PayPal. A lot of groups have that. You can donate a dollar, two dollars a month, and that really means a lot to people who are really, really just trying to get by on, you know, a two hundred dollars a month to them means a huge difference to being able to keep keep doing what they're doing. Some of these smaller groups. So I would suggest that you search out for some of the people who are uh, the creators out there that you can you can support. And then also on Facebook, if you if you like a post on Facebook, if you comment on a post on Facebook, and if you share a post on Facebook, that brings up the rankings to the person who hosts that site. Um, I know it's a, they say don't like things on Facebook, but really, you know, you can support them by uh, liking, uh, sharing, and, um, and commenting, because they get extra points. And then when they have extra points on Facebook, then it makes their posts go out farther into the, into the world. So those are all little things. And then, of course, Wikipedia, you can come to come to GSOW, I'll be happy to train you. It's all done on the internet, it's all done at your own speed, and I have trained people who have absolutely very little skill in um, computers to people who are, you know, PhD mathematics students who are actually getting their PhDs now, and we have all levels of people with experience, and all we really need is people with a passion for the project, people who are interested in um, in, in really trying to improve the world and trying to educate everybody, people who are okay with taking criticism, constructive criticism, and who can handle our very strange sense of humor, which is quite, quite um, odd. And you need to be able to be on Facebook, because at least in the secret cabal, so if you don't ever go to Facebook, except for our group, that's fine. And you'll have to obviously have an internet connection. But that's really about it. I think I have a few minutes for, for Q&A. <laughs> more uh, just a second I'll uh, find me anywhere sit down next to me I will pull out a computer or phone and I will go into detail to explain to you anything that you want to know um, if you've ever done an edit on Wikipedia and it's failed I will explain why it failed and why you were banned um, I'm also going to be talking live edits right before we go to dinner tonight I will like I said I will show you some of the Wikipedia work we've done I will do it in front of you so you can see it done just because it's kind of fun and then tomorrow I'm going to be speaking again and that I'm going to be speaking about my other passion, which is Greek vampires, um, psychics. Because I do quite a bit of activism besides Wikipedia. And I will be talking about um, uh, something I have some, my latest Greek vampire I've, been take, I've taken on. Because as I said, I'm an activist. Question. Hi, thank you very much for that talk. Quick clarification. Uh, earlier you were saying you can't just take a photograph and put it up on wiki. What I think you meant by that is you can't just take a photograph off another source. Yes, because you have to be the owner. Because of taking a photograph and taking a photograph. You have to be the owner of the photo or you have to get permission. So I can't just go and take a photo that I found. A lot of blogs just take photos from wherever. 
um, Natural News is taking photos off my Facebook page to put on, on articles that are doing to slam me. That's fine, you know, I'm like, okay, go for it. You're trolling my Facebook page, it's hilarious. <laughs> Questions? Oh, she had a question right on purple. Can I, can I steal a question quickly? Steal um, it, yeah, that's really 42. Um, we do have some local Wikipedia pages like Homeopathy in New Zealand and Regulation Alternative Medicine, and I see you've done some good work. Mark Hanna now has a Wikipedia page as of very recently. If we were to start focusing on the local New Zealand stuff, where should we start? Should we start with the bullshit and putting the critical angle in there, or should we start with building up the local skeptics and scientists and that side? The first thing you would do is you would join GSOW, <laughs> and I will train you correctly, because you cannot just go into a Wikipedia page like homeopathy and make an edit and expect it to stick. I don't care if it's homeopathy in New Zealand or homeopathy in Queenstown, it's not going to stick because the homeopaths will probably going to watch it. You've got to have training. We can teach you, I mean, anybody can edit Wikipedia. You guys can pull up your phone right now to edit Wikipedia without even having an account. But it ain't going to stick, unless it's something, uh, you know, power, uh, hard. When you go through training with me, you start with the little stuff. We do little things. We add a photo, we, we make an author link, and then it moves on to more and more difficult tasks. And when you're done, we're, we're going to make you re before you end, you have to rewrite a Wikipedia page, and it's usually a person. Um, uh, Harold did uh, Peter Bogosian, and you did, Julie did Joseph, Joseph Guilford? Gilfa. Gilfa. Uh, this, the editor who did the uh, uh, Robert Todd Carroll I mentioned earlier, he's in Egypt, and he listened to me on Skepticality and joined, and he rewrote this, that page, and he got to meet. One of the consequences of joining DSOW is you a lot of times get to meet these people and interact with them, and it's really, really awesome. <laughs> but um, you'll learn more about them than you can imagine. So yes, you would start with something small, like probably all those things you'd probably move you to improving the pages of the skeptics in this community, and then you, once you have a good history and you have knowledge about what you're doing, then you would move on to doing some real things like homeopathy and you know really going after them. Because you need to have those edits stick. You need it to be done right. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I guess this is a similar question. With your um, site on the computer where you can rank things as um, you know, a shonky website, um, if this is a shonky clinic and it goes red, what's to stop them um, um, ranking themselves as good again and you just get this sort of war of uh, you know, good, not good? Okay, you're talking about Web of Trust, right? Yeah, Web of Trust. Okay, great question. It takes a lot to change a, uh, a web address page, so it probably takes thousands of people to, to rate it. And I ran a project for a very long time, a little over a year, called Skeptic Action. And what I was doing is I was tweeting out a website every day, and, and then people, my followers, maybe a thousand people, would go in mass and rate it. And that was something I did for a while, and I, I, I just can't do that anymore. I don't have time. But so people in mass voting will do it. The problem with the paranormal community, and I get this question a lot, so I'll answer it now, uh, on Wikipedia is, why doesn't the paranormal community just come in and change it back? Because anybody can edit. The reason is, is because the paranormal community isn't much of a community. It seems like it, but if you think the skeptics are apathetic, the paranormal community has this in spades. Can you hear me okay? The helicopter? Because it's, it's really loud. Um, we really are more organized than they are, believe it or not. Even though they have huge conferences and there's millions of them compared to the thousands of us, it's still, they don't understand the rules. They don't understand following rules. They do not understand that, how to evaluate evidence. They don't understand what's going to stand with Wikipedia or on Web of Trust. They're just not that organized in this activism thing. We're, the GSOW project is, is interested in a huge scope. I have people who work on uh, pages that are concerned with uh, people, people who, um, people, some of them are more interested in Scientology, some people are <coughs> interested in UFOs, some people are interested in quacks. So in the, my community, we're interested in a lot of things, atheism, some people just work on conferences, some people, we all have our favorite things we want to do. Um, so we're general, but we're able to spread that knowledge amongst a, a wider base, like this conference is. This isn't a conference on one topic. This is a conference on so many general things that, as a collective, we're learning from each other. And we're able to get that information and, and, and get it out to a, in a place where it's, it's um, energizing each one of us. So 
Um, the paranormal community just isn't able to do that. Most of them run. I have many, many, I've seen many, many saying, oh, we can't do anything with Wikipedia. Oh my gosh, this girl is going to so evil. I'm going to go over here and do this other little thing and cry in the corner. But, you know, they just, they're not organized. They don't have the skills. They're not, maybe not tech enough. It's just, it's, it's just not happening. My next question. Yes. Young men in the back. Uh, hello, I hope um, you know, Hi. Made Wookie Gradient could be a good slogan for you. What was it? Made Wookie Gradient. I want to apologize for America. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. I'd like to know your approach to um, figures that are controversial even within our community. Someone like Sam Harris, who may have some very dangerous views, but are also subject to mischaracterizations. How do you go about balancing their Wikipedia pages? Wow, how do you balance a Wikipedia page? Well, we like to have criticism on a Wikipedia page because it's, I'm not sure I know all about Sam Harris's, uh, we didn't write that page, but um, I'm, let me see if I can just draw on a page really quick. Okay, let's say the Brzezinski Clinic or a, a, a UFO sighting page or something like that. We like to have the best evidence possible. Whatever the best argument is, whatever, oh, yeah, um, my favorite, spontaneous human combustion. <laughs> oh my God, that's my, that was the biggest fear I, I had growing up, that we were just going to burst the flame somewhere, walking down the street. That was scary. So we rewrote the Wikipedia page for spontaneous human combustion, and it is now our number one viewed page. Would you believe it? How many, we looked at this, it was like 100,000 people a month look at the spontaneous human combustion page in English. Can you believe it? I mean... You know, anyway, so, okay, for example, spontaneous human combustion. We wanted to have the absolute best evidence, the best story they had. So, like, if, so, if, so, if they say, this guy spontaneously human, human, this guy, <laughs> in 2012, and the media reported all these things about it, we want that on the Wikipedia page, along with the explanation, because, we want to be able to counteract it. So if somebody is looking into spontaneous human combustion and they say, oh, well, these skeptics don't know everything because look at this guy. He burst into flames in 2012 and he was at his home and he was, and blah, blah, blah. And then they go, oh, and that's what they think did it. it that he was wearing a flammable gown. He was hugely overweight. He was smoking a cigarette. He was alone. The cigarette dropped into his lap and, you know, they found him four days later, and his body's burned in a certain pattern called the wick pattern, which is, here's another site that explains what the wick pattern is. And so they, so we want the criticism on it. We don't do anything that's gossipy. We don't do anything that is, the citations we put on there have to be notable. They have to be, we can't just put up like natural news, or we can't just put whatever on there. It has to be from a secondary source that's notable. So we do want criticism on all the pages. The Susan Gerbic page has criticism. Um, I'd like it to have even more, but it keeps getting deleted because they say, we can't have all this criticism on there. I'm like, yes, yes, put more, more, more. Um, so, did that answer the question? The rich, we want the criticism, but we want it to be balanced enough that it's written so that it's not gossipy or hateful. It just has to be written like, a, you know, this, this New York Times wrote about Sam Harris saying blah, 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 and then Sam Harris has responded, and he says blah, blah, blah. And so, so everybody gets both sides of the story as best we can. Yes, no, no. I think I think we we'll wrap it up there. Okay. And uh, lunch is ready, everyone. So. Oh, and make sure you go get stickers and magnets and I mean and mirrors and things in back there because I'm not bringing it back. So, would you take a moment with you? Okay. Thank, Thank you. So much.